Welcome to the College Investor Audio Show, where we talk about the biggest issues impacting millennial money, from student loan debt to side hustles to building wealth. We will show you how to get out of debt so that you can build real wealth for the future. Welcome to another College Investor Audio Show. Today is a term that we're going to answer. You may have heard of EIN before. We talk about it a lot on the podcast. So what is an EIN? Maybe you're wondering, how do I get one of those? So an EIN is a unique identifying number issued by the IRS for a business. It's used to open business checking accounts and file taxes, among other things. EINs are easy to get, and most businesses will find that they eventually need one. In this article, we'll cover what an EIN is in detail and also how to get one. An Employer Identification Number, EIN, or as it is sometimes called by its longer name, a Federal Employer Identification Number, <laughs> FEIN. It's an identifying number used by a business. It's a nine-digit number, just as a tax identification number is for individuals. For example, your Social Security number. The EIN is only for businesses, though. Any new business must obtain an EIN in order to open a checking account set up retirement and medical benefits for employees, and also to file a tax return. The IRS uses the EIN to identify a business's financial information and tax returns. EINs are permanent numbers and unique to each business. EINs are public information and are also used on W-9s as well. Who needs one? This is straight from the IRS website. You will need an EIN if you answer yes to any of these questions. Do you have employees? Do you operate your business as a corporation or a partnership? Do you file any of these tax returns, employment, excise, or alcohol, tobacco, and firearms? Do you withhold taxes on income other than wages paid to a non-resident alien? Do you have a Keo plan? Are you involved with any of these types of organizations, trusts, except certain grantor-owned revocable trusts, IRAs, exempt organization business income tax returns? Estates, real estate mortgage investment conduits, nonprofit organizations, farmers' cooperatives, or plan administrators. If you are creating a small, single person business, it might not be necessary to get an EIN. Now, the business can operate as a sole pri proprietorship or a single member LLC. You can operate without an EIN under these two structures, mainly because there are no employees. But even in these scenarios, there are reasons to consider getting an EIN. Many banks do require an EIN to open a business checking account. If you're serious about your business, a business checking account is a must to get your financials separate, individual versus business. <laughs> and as your business grows, it's inevitable that you will work with other businesses. And in those cases, a TIN or EIN will be required, such as for W-9s and 1099s. Instead of sending your social security number around, you can use your EIN and business name. And as you work with contractors, you'll need to issue 1099s for them, which will require either your TIN or TIN or EIN. Using your EIN again helps keep your social security number private. Finally, if your business files taxes, an EIN will be needed. So, getting one is simple. There are several ways to obtain one from the IRS. Just simply go into the IRS website, irs.gov, and searching for EIN. Or you can mail or fax the IRS as well and check all the mailing and fax information. Who faxes anymore? I don't know. But hey, you can do it. Online applicants can also expect to receive their EIN in about two weeks. Mail or fax people, four to five weeks. They prefer online stuff. One question on the EIN application asks for a responsible party. This is a person who is responsible for the company. If you're the only person in the company, you are the responsible party. If more than one person is responsible for the company, select one of those people. And then after receiving your EIN, you can apply for a business license or open a business checking account. Be sure to write your EIN down and keep it in a safe place. If you happen to lose your number, you can call the IRS and select the EIN option. You'll be connected with an IRS employee who can help you. So when is a different EIN required? There are some cases that do require a different or maybe even a new EIN. Simply changing the name of your business doesn't require a new EIN. If the business type or legal structure changes, though, 
a new EIN might be required. Rather than go through the long list of scenarios <laughs> that require a new EIN, you can review them at thecollegeinvestor.com or go to irs.gov and just search for small business self-employed. Do you need a new EIN? That type of thing. Now, there really isn't any reason to wait on getting an EIN. It's more likely that one day you'll need one immediately, only to find out that you have to wait at least two weeks under the best case scenario. <laughs> Instead of putting yourself in a bind, why not just apply for one now and be ready when the time comes? I hope that was helpful today. And thanks so much for stopping by and listening to the College Investor Audio Show. Send this to somebody you think would be helpful too. Let's just help each other out. If you have any more questions, everything you need to know, all kinds of resources and stuff and links and everything at thecollegeinvestor.com. We'll talk to you again soon.